It has been said before, but I will repeat it. The proposition that America is institutionally racist requires that something creates an environment. Two things create an environment for slavery or racism, and they are needed for it to exist. One is a social contract, as in the South during slavery. Two, codified law. A social contract like you have in the South. I just need him, I wish somebody had asked him to explain what he means. Because for you to imply that slavery is a, con a contract, it implies that some people willingly said, I'm ready to be enslaved. So you speak to me and I say, I'm going to work for you, I'm going to be your slave, and you're going to pay me money. But we all know historically that's not how we went down. People were described as chattel, so like things. They're not described as human beings, they were described as things. They were not paid, they were killed, they were raped. You have videos and pictures of black women hanging and their belly, pregnant black women hanging and their bellies cut open and their babies hanging and there's white onlookers watching them. You, you have so many s s stories like that which shows that people were dehumanized. He's basically excusing all of that, says we should forget about all of that because we're living in the now. And now there is no social contract for racism. Okay, what you call redlining. When he's talking about law, uh, for law to exist, okay. So he talks about the Civil Rights Act in 1964. And the Civil Rights Act in 1964 states that there should be no discrimination on age, sex, gender, everything. The reason why protesters are going out today is because those laws are not being upheld. They're given reasons in social economic status. They're talking about areas, poor areas, where investors have taken their money out, where the police have taken their presence out, or they're just basically having like a martial law situation in there. You're talking about areas where the government has cut funding to youth parks and have cut, cut funding to education and teachers. Places that are forgotten. They're on the outskirts of the town. That means there's no investment coming in. There's no policing. They put them in a state of decay. And you're telling me that the people who live there should somehow be able to fight their way out of it. Now I gave an example. You have two frogs. You put one frog in water, you put the other frog inside. Now, the water is the, the frog's natural habitat. The, the, the frog is going to flourish in water. The frog dies in sand. Now you then commend the frog for doing well in water and multiplying and flourishing. And you commend those exceptional frogs that grew up on sand and managed to make it into water. You commend them. You don't you don't commend them above the others, but then you blame the ones who naturally died in the harsh conditions. This is how you sound when you say there's no institutional racism. Neither of those things exist in American culture today. And in fact, if they did exist as such, then the UK would also be guilty.
it's not going to be explicit. It's going to be implicit because it's illegal. So they're going to play on the ignorance of people. So Google racial covenants. The British Social Attitudes Survey of, 20, of 2001, 25% of Brits are very or little prejudiced against people of other races. In 2013, 30% of Brits are very little prejudiced or little prejudiced against people of other races. I also reject that because it is a survey. It is a poll. It is not a reflection of the British community, nor is it a reflection of the American community. The issues of racism and prejudice will always exist. The issues that plague blacks in America or anyone who is disadvantaged have too many factors for me to address in eight minutes or eight hours. about talking about law and social contracts if racism and prejudice exist that means they are social contracts which enforce racism and prejudice but if you admit living is racist and prejudice how can you not see that this racism and prejudice will affect us at the bottom of the ladder when you are at the top level of the ladder most likely racism and prejudice people who are the wealthiest in the United States They were the strongest, so they killed, got rid of everybody in their way, and then massive wealth, which they then passed down to future generations. Massive wealth, which they then gave to people who look like them, and it's, it's documented that they set people off and gave them the opportunity to be wealthy, and they set another race back. They actually set them back. So if you set somebody back, why don't you then put them where they would have been? This is what they mean when they're talking about reparations. So even in the UK, there's things where you have lost money based on somebody's negligence, like PPI, for example. PPI is reparations. The bank owned up to what could be illegally sold you something, you would have lost this amount of money. We're going to give you back the money you lost that we took from you. We're also going to give you the interest that you would have accrued on it. This is how you, this is how you uphold accountability. For you to then say for an entire race where it's not that you were misled, beaten, you were raped, you were tortured, you were held less than a human being. And these are things, psychological trauma, PTSD, that people are going through where they don't feel good enough. Okay, this goes down to the type of society we live in, capitalism. This goes down to policies, this goes down to leadership, this goes down to the model of society. So it's not about what he's saying and the facts he's trying to present. It's about looking around you at the world and seeing where the money goes. Because where the money goes shows who the government cares about. But in our society, we continue to address them with actions, not with narrative, not with conspiracy theories about DEA creating drugs, or not with conspiracy theories about agencies forming groups to go after blacks in some way. There are many examples I can counter. One, by the way, by one of the speakers, just for a point of information, George Zimmerman was not a police officer, therefore you should use a better example. 